In my view, the global outlook could be characterized with the following three characteristics. Firstly, uh, extremely dynamic market demand situation, which is extremely unpredictable. Uh, secondly, volatility in the commodity prices, which is both fuel and food. And finally, uh, a market which is will have significant pressure on, on capital, the need for capital, especially the prioritization in markets which will require significant uh, return on investment. Uh, however, having said that, I'm, I'm extremely bullish on, on the following sectors, the energy sector uh, especially, uh, given the fact that the smart grid concept has both tangible and intangible benefits, uh, we should see different drivers in, in two uh, distinct markets. Firstly, the developed markets, which is driven by increase in consumer experience, which is looking at being able to A, measure, monitor, and then predict the, the demand and the consumption pattern of consumers. And finally, in the uh, emerging markets, which is needing a much larger provisioning of, of uh, energy itself, that could come from both creation of more generation, but at the same time significantly could be contributed by uh, savings in, in grid efficiency and, and transmission losses. As we all know, RIM today is an intrinsic part of uh, any IT outsourcing engagement. The fact that it's a non-discretionary spread, uh, it's extremely imperative to get that right and you know address both issues. Firstly, uh, the cost optimization, which is the immediate and, and quicker return, but more importantly, the industrialization of IT in terms of operations as well. Uh, you know, and uh, today we see corporations continuing to invest in, in this uh, trend, uh, you know, to essentially look at how they could recoup some of these savings and then put them back in, in larger transformational programs which will ultimately change the business. What we're also seeing is an increasing trend where, or we're seeing the emergence of this trend where uh, the concepts of RIM are now being applied to adjacent spaces uh, which are just adjacent to the IT itself. So operations around business slightly getting coupled with uh, the, the, the IT operations side itself. Uh, also what we're looking at is, is the emergence of uh, companies looking at re-architecting their internal systems so that once they have uh, taken the benefit of a remote infrastructure management model, they can now look at a cloud uh, operating model in their internal IT as well so that they can have some agility in the asset side of the spend in, in their IDs. So given that we are now living in a world which is a lot more complex, unpredictable, and interconnected, it really sets an, uh, you know, two critical challenges as I see it. Firstly, around the, the dynamic workforce, and secondly, around the dynamic uh, market demand. If we take the, the first one, which is the dynamic workforce, uh, as we all know, the, the, the millennial workforce is a lot more aware, a lot more well-connected, and a lot more collaborative. At the same time, they're obviously a lot more demanding and impatient. So how do we look at the people management practices and therefore align ourselves to support this millennial workforce? You know, some examples could be the inverted pyramid, and therefore how do we increase the empowerment with accountability at the lowest level. Uh, at the same time, if, if you look at uh, you know, areas such as the dynamic market condition, how do we, you know, we all talk about the fact that uh, how can we be more real time and responsive to the market situation, but the critical issue really is how do we align our cost structures which are more real time and responsive uh, to the uh, output itself. Uh, IT in, in this area can play a very important role uh, you know, in both these examples, the first being how do we create new systems where the measurement and metrics of, uh, of the way we look at uh, the performance of individuals is built around uh, collaboration, innovation, and how can we measure that in, in real time rather than the annual appraisal cycles. And secondly, around the uh, business itself, how much more can we align the business with IT for the different business processes which are there and therefore allow the business to be able to take real-time decisions uh, around that. This is an extremely important question for today's time, especially with the fact that the emerging markets are, are growing uh, much faster and really fueling the growth for global corporations. So emerging markets really come with their own unique set of needs and solutions at price points which are far, far different from the developed markets. 
Hence, global corporations will not be able to use the philosophies which were being used earlier in launching new products and services for these markets that were largely around the adapted mode or fine-tuned mode. Uh, I think the, as we go along, in order to sustain the competitive advantage in these markets, corporations uh, will need to design uh, products which are grounds up, uh, which suit a specific functionality for these markets so that there is, there is a much higher uh, acceptance of the products in these emerging markets. Uh, given that these are you know, challenges which are imposed by the emerging markets, they also do come with their own set of advantages which the global corporations can benefit. Uh, once these you know, products are designed and developed for these markets, they could be experimented in these emerging markets and then be relaunched in, in developed markets as well. So a much lower cost of designing products and then experimenting with the, with the acceptability of these products before actually going for a final launch and ramping up the, the, the strategy in, in either of these markets. In this increasingly diverse uh, world, I think the you know, three, three new norms that I, I believe would kind of take emergence, the, f the first being about managing the global diversity. And this really has to do with how does one use new people management practices in managing the, the global talent pool and then utilizing them and harnessing them for the benefit of the business. The second being around collaborate to win. How does one forge new partnerships and alliances that in, in which you know, either party has a, has a value addition, and then therefore, uh, it, if we look at a combined solution stack from the ecosystem, uh, the value is extremely high, and individually, the individual solutions are really, uh, do not really have a market in themselves. And finally, of course, it, it is about the business engagement ethos, which really needs to take precedence and, and have a foundation in trust, transparency, and flexibility. Very specifically to the IT industry, we definitely see uh, this being a, a lot more relevant given the fact that technology companies are getting aligned to service companies. Therefore, a, a, a global ecosystem that is built on a 360 degree view of the relationship will, will need to be a core foundation of sustainable growth in the future. You know, in most of the situations, sustainability has largely been talked about in terms of uh, eco-friendliness and, and the environment uh, conditions itself. I think from a business perspective, there are two new increasing risks, and, and you know, some of this was touched upon in the earlier question. It is really about you know, three things, the, the, the dynamic workforce, the dynamic market situation, and finally, the corporate governance. I guess given these three important aspects, which are extremely critical, for sustaining business in the future, we will need to have strategies around each of these three areas uh, and, and not just looking at the larger macroeconomic situation.